So I wanted to spill my knowledge into a video about leading up to buying this buying this particular bike. And um, let me before I get too far. I got my phone on here so I can kind of monitor my video angle, and then the sun kind of washes things out a bit. Okay, I see where I'm. I see what you're seeing or gonna see. So what led up to buying this bike, which I was never intending to buy because I was testing and spending a lot of time with and between the bikes before I got this that I had test rode the most was the Road Glide Ultra. And obviously that's not what it chose. And I was going to cover some of the differences because uh, there's, there's one negative aspect floating out there with the Road Glide that's got nothing to do with the engineering. It'll affect the Road Glide, the Road Glide Ultra. Um, I was noticing it and it was concerning me and it kind of released me mentally to go for this particular model of bike. Uh, I didn't particularly warm to the um, handlebar mounted bat wing. Um, since I've had it, I'm understanding more some advantages because like I said, up to before buying this, I had done most of my test riding on the road glide. So the first negative aspect um, with the road glide ultra you're gonna run into and it can come put together from the dealer like this, it could come after repair is that shark nose fairing getting that thing straight. I've literally put my fingers in between the fairing and the tank on the left and right sides and there's a whole finger difference and you can see the thing tilted to one side or the other. Uh, I don't know if that affects the handling so much but if you're somebody that's kind of autistic visual like me that when I when I have to see something that's not straight in front of me continually misaligned I want to straighten it and again that's got nothing to do with the bike or the engineering because I, I prefer it because of how it cuts through the wind and how the wind hits the rider so what do I mean by that um, the shark nose fairing is frame mounted and that does affect how it passes through the wind but the wind coming over this way the windscreen here on the ultras and the electric glides is much closer. It's right here, so it hits you right here. So whereas the road glide, it's further out, so it's gonna come over in a different way. I kind of like that better. Um, some things that are gonna be, that you need, what you need to do for these to be complete, you need to test ride these bikes if you're, if you're wanting to decide between which one you want, the road glide ultra or the ultra limited or the road glide and the then the name changes up to the street glide or the electric glide classic <laughs> anyways those others four mention have this bat wing ferry anyways name games so uh just say shark nose and the, uh, these other guys us so in test riding what i would do you probably got about six different test rides yes six so you want to test ride each bike with a low windscreen, the stock medium, and then get a little taller one. And make sure you get on the freeway. And then get in some corners. So freeway and corners. So you got about six test rides there. If you want to strip that down, you probably could strip it down to four. But I would test ride each bike with low, medium, and high windscreens and uh, see what you like. And it is. It's going to come down to what you like. The one's not better than the other. It's just how, how you like the bike to travel through the wind and then how that wind end up, ends up coming back on you. Um, it's a personal preference thing. There's not one that's more right than the other. If you like a strip down and don't like any fairing, um, get that. So there's, there's no right or wrong way to, way to go here. Now, you probably won't test ride for a night ride. So the Ultra, these guys, the Batwingers, they have a big main headlight and then if you have just the Ultra or actually the street lights don't, you have the big main headlight or you might have the uh, two little auxiliary lights. So I find that gives a pretty good spread of light. You're going to find that 
you're going to find that as you get older, no stock set of headlights for a motorcycle is probably going to be adequate because your eyes just aren't working as good anymore. I, I struggle with that. Uh, this, what this provides seems bare minimum for me. Now, the Road Glide. And it won't change with the Ultra. They have two stock lights. They are bigger than my auxiliary lights, but there's not, they're not as big as my main headlight. They're kind of two, but in between. So I find at night that that didn't quite, that was probably pushing it for me. In fact, if I had, so I found that, found the light, probably not to where I need at this point in my life. And I'd probably be adding some auxiliary stuff. And hey, we got train up there. This is one of the few times I've come through here. I've always wanted to catch the train. That is cool. Sorry, digression here. But oh yeah, you just sound, or part of it. Actually, this might be an inlet. This might not actually be technically Puget Sound, but an inlet from it, but, so. Okay, um, on the Ultra models, you wanna test ride these. Uh, these are gonna have lowers, meaning stuff that's gonna, I hate doing this one, got stuff in front, but down here, uh, to be guarding your legs. The intent is not necessarily to guard your legs, but on the Ultras, you're gonna have, um, you don't have the classic version of this, you're gonna have some radiator mechanics in there, or the, the, fluid, the fluid reservoir for the radiator. So I believe there's a, is it a small one on this bike or is it just a wrap? I thought I saw a small one, or maybe that was the oil cooler. Anyways, there's, with the Ultras, you've got, you've got, of course, you've got, the traditional air cooling you've got the oil cooler and it looks like the radiator i think it has an oil cooler oh shoot i might be giving this information but anyways these bikes come with liquid cooling on them around the heads and they talked about this in the magazines about you remember on the older ones you'd have this heat peeing like needles happening needling happening and you were basically doing pre pre-detonation uh, you'll, you'll really notice it. These are meant to have 92. You throw 87 in here, you'll really notice it going up a hill and on a hot day. It'll just, you'll hear this needling in the, in the engine. So I noticed with the liquid cooling, I, I rarely hear that with, with, this, with this particular version of the twin cam. I, I can't, I think I've, I think I've heard it like maybe once. And it was like on a 95 degree day going up a hill. Um, these engines are big, they run hot, um, but then they also talked about in the magazines a little tad bit more output on liquid-cooled engines. Uh, if you do notice something different with the last version of the twin cam engine, which is called the uh, high output, uh, they put um, an upgraded cam setup in here. So it already is more peppy, it's smoother. Uh, I just, I, I wouldn't want to, I loved my Road King once I got that sucker stabilized to where I want it, but I, I don't want to go back from this. If I, the only challenge with this is big, heavy with the trunk. Uh, if I had one of the older ones, like one of the old Electra Glide, whatever with the trunk and all the setup, the old fashioned, what do they have a cassette in there? The balance on that thing is probably horrid compared to this thing. Um, in fact, I'll see people cross-pollinate between a really old Electra, a really old Road Glide, um, or they have another one that's kind of like the Road Glide. They don't have it. What do they call that? Um, I see it's got a funky old-fashioned. It looks like actually kind of like a Honda, but anyways they'll transition to something with the opposite type of fairing into a 2014 or up and they'll be like oh my god this is and it is they are seeing a huge difference but you're also seeing the, the rush more improvements uh, with the better balancing and the frame adjustments and they've changed up all the mount points on stuff so you can't use boxes and boxes and bags and, and certain accessories going back and forth between the bikes uh, while that may seem bad, these mount point changes, I suspect, are due to subtle changes in balance, balance of the bike. So, those are some of the things I noticed, how the bike traveled, travels uh, through the air, 
what you can see here on the front of the road you'll see more road here both you can't see the front tire you see more road how the wind hits you um, with a lower windscreen actually even with a taller um, this is not a sport bike but this thing feels more sportier frankly if you get one of these bikes and um, decide that oh maybe i got the wrong <laughs> um, you're not going to lose with either bike i i've test ridden the other bike more i own this one now um, you're gonna you're getting especially in the ultra models you're getting an awesome awesome motorcycle um, you're, you're really not going to lose with either one um, oh one more thing i remember from my test riding the navigation if you get the one with the navigation screen well they call this the boom gt or something road glide it's further out the sun has a tendency to wash that out so its usefulness becomes a struggle. Also, the Ultra Limited comes stock with heated grips. If you want that, you have to put them, anything that has a sharp nose, you have to add those. I don't think there's anything that comes with heated grips, even in the sand. I can't think of anything else that I've picked up and learned, so. I might sign off here.